tactile symbols are um, things that children can access who maybe have difficulty with hearing or vision, you know, kids that can't necessarily see a printed symbol or a picture on a piece of paper, or kids that um, can't hear when we are verbally speaking to them about um, different words or what may be happening in So um, Mrs. Harrison and myself each have our own self-contained special education class. Um, our kids vary in needs from some are ambulatory, some are non-ambulatory, meaning they're in a wheelchair. Um, we also work on some communication needs, some are verbal, some are non-verbal. Um, so we kind of have a smaller environment in order to teach reading, math, and writing within a more structured and kind of a slower pace and at each kid's level. At our elementary school, we have two self-contained gifted classrooms, both a fourth grade room and a fifth grade room. Our students range from the ages of 9 to 11 years old. So the problem that we had was that our students were accessing core language um, brought to us by Ms. Kim Carney. <laughs> and she made these symbols so that our kids could access their language needs. But me and Christina did not have a way for them to access our schedule, our daily schedule. Um, so that was the pro problem that was posed to the fifth grade students is that we said we need a way for kids that can't see and can't hear to read their daily schedule and navigate their day. PBL is a wonderful time in our day where students are able to take on the role of becoming engineers. They imagine, they design, they create, and then sometimes they redesign in order to make their outcomes more successful. Our focus for this particular PBL was on helping our SAC classroom communicate through the use of 3D models. To get started, our students started by researching and learning more about the students that they would be helping. They're really just like us. They just can't think the way we do. And I wanted to help them. I was excited that we would be able to help kids who aren't really able to communicate and give them a chance to understand and learn um, more how to um, listen and communicate. I had centers. The first thing we had to know, me and my partner, was what centers was because it's not very clear and it was a rotation thing so and then we wanted to make something that was different from all the other ones so we did arrows going in different directions like what colors to make it to make sure if they can see it or not what colors made it easier to see what size it would be for their hands because their hands are smaller than ours so like what size their palm would be What the students use to make their 3D designs is a web-based program called Tinkercad. They had all been exposed to it the previous year and most of them had designed something and had it printed either here or at their home school. They used the program to create their designs and then they submitted their designs to myself or someone else. It would be assessed for printability and feedback on anything that needed to be changed would be given back to them and then they would tweak their designs accordingly so that they ended up with a printable design. We used Dremel 3D40 and a Dremel 3D45 printer to create the 3D prints. As students designed this project, we had to ask them a lot of questions. We started with asking them about symbols and what symbols meant and what were some universal symbols that everyone would understand. We also had to do some troubleshooting because they, were, they needed a symbol for snack and a symbol for lunch. So what would make them different and what would make them understandable to this um, student body. After that, 
they started to design in Tinkercad. And from there, we need to ask them to go through the Tinkercad checklist. Make sure you looked at your design from all angles. Make sure nothing's floating in the air. Is it anchored? Is it solid? And then mostly through questions, we got the answers that we needed to make sure kids could check their own work. I had to make a couple of changes because sometimes when you have a specific thing, you have to make like a face, it kind of goes spaghetti and it's not that clear. So I had to make a couple of changes and do a speech bubble instead and make lines inside of it, so yeah. I had to change the shape of my design and how like thick it was because um, Ms. Mitchell and Ms. Stickler told us that we had to, it had to be this uh, either a circle or a square and our shape had to be a specific size. Yes, yeah, so uh, in the beginning when we were making it, um, me and my partner were going off two different designs and uh, we didn't look at the bottom and uh, we re after we realized that it was way too big, then we cut it down to like uh, uh, like their hand size. Let's look at our schedule. The first thing that we started our day off with is our breakfast. Ella, you feel that? We started our day off with breakfast. Here you go, Bri. We started our day with breakfast. Good job touching. You feel our breakfast? Good job. Kristen, we started with breakfast. After breakfast, we have our reading stations. We have reading. Good touch, Al. Brian. We have our reading stations. Okay. Reading, Kristen. Uh, yeah, book, you're right, for reading. I feel really glad that I was able to help kids, and I'm really excited that I got to help people. Yeah. Uh, to make it easier for them. This is probably one of my favorite PBLs ever to do because you can actually help someone in need of help and it just makes me feel really good and warms my heart up. Um, my favorite part of this entire PBL was watching my students or our students watch um, the other students use these symbols. Their reactions and their smiles and the pure joy when they realized something they made um, we're making a difference in these students' lives and that they were able to identify, oh, this means gym, um, or this means PE, um, was amazing. We're so happy. We're we love it. so happy. We're great.